Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled, summer scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board of, of Awesomeness. awesomeness. <laughs> and <laughs> we're just going to keep that up until we all get voted out. And then the next board will be maybe more awesome. And that'll be great. Tonight, we're going to talk to Megan Rhodes, who's going to let us know how our self-evaluation on ADA planning went for our, our buildings and grounds. Uh, we got a couple of special permits to put out there because it's that season. If everybody hasn't noticed, all the pollen does eventually turn into vegetables. And that, right, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, fruitful vegetables, which means farmers want to have parties, and that's a good thing. And uh, we have a little bit of updates uh, around aggregation, some uh, building permit fees that the building is commissioner bought to us, and a couple of basic updates around North Main Street and the potential intersection. Um, with that said, uh, members want to add anything to the intro? David was saying go Bruins earlier, but he's, he's, a, he's, a, week, he's a week behind. <laughs> yeah, right. Tom, want anything? All set, Scotty. Okay, so we're going to start tonight, <clears throat> and sorry for the delay. It's just summer. We were downstairs gabbing um, uh, with Megan Rhodes from the Council of Governments and a uh, presentation about our self-evaluation and our plan. Now, this is, as I recall, uh, of something that... COG and the town have worked on, and we're in assessment mode right now, and these are findings, yes. and these turn into potential action plans. Yes. Sounds, yeah. sounds great. So yeah, come on up. Sure. And thanks so much, Megan. Sure, my pleasure. So last fall, the town contract of the Council of Governments to conduct an ADA self-evaluation and transition plan. They, they're considered two documents, but yep. it's one document, okay. really. Um, so what that does is we look at the town's buildings and infrastructure. We also look at the programs, services, and activities and evaluate them to see how well they comply with the American with Disabilities Act. Okay. Um, and so what this report does is it catalogs any findings we found, any potential issues, and then it recommends um, how to fix those and then it prioritizes those recommendations and more, what's more important than others, what they may cost relatively, mm -hmm. um, versus, and also who's responsible for implementing those actions. Um, and what this, this ADA self-evaluation transition plan does for the town is it protects the town. So if, if um, someone were to have a complaint or an issue, if they were to sue the town, you would be protected because if someone, if there was a finding that there is an issue, you could then be liable for everything within town and have to implement everything yeah. right away. Um, but what this does <laughs> yeah. is you can say, no, we do take this very seriously. We've we've looked at it. We have a plan to how we're going to be carrying this out in a um, incremental way. So it, it's actually, while it does seem counterintuitive that we're looking for any issues in the town, it does help protect the town. So actually, if I could, in industry, there's a lot of self-reviews for uh, safety. Yeah. Very, is that what you're describing is analogous to that. Yes. You can invite in, in a friendly fashion, people who would otherwise be in uh, enforcement and do in a friendly fashion an assessment and then have an action plan. And you start, what, I think what you're describing is something exactly. similar. Exactly. Pretty much. Yep. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. So what we did is in the fall, we went and we evaluated all the sidewalks, the outdoor rec facilities you have in town. And then over the winter, we looked at the different programs and services and departments here in town um, in terms of how well they provide effective communication, or reasonable modifications to individuals who may have disabilities, um, and the, the different policies within town. And then this spring, in February vacation we, we, we looked at, we went into the school while the students weren't there and looked at all the different, um, inside that building, inside all the rooms. And then the spring, we looked at every single building here within town um, and parks to, to evaluate them. And so the findings we found in terms of um, policies, I'll start with that first. Um, the, a, a local government under the American Disabilities Act is required to have three administrative things. The first is you have to have an ADA coordinator designated, which you have, a Sherry. She's the designated ADA coordinator. And then you need two other things, which the town does not yet have, but they're pretty simple, straightforward administrative things to do. Um, it's to create a notice of non-discrimination. Okay. Um, and that basically just lays out in a piece of paper, if someone wants to request, say, an interpreter for a meeting such as this, yep. the procedure for how they can go about doing that. Yep. Um, and then 
you know, different accommodations, such like that. And then the second thing that you need and you don't have as of yet is a complaint procedure. Okay. So if someone does have an issue, who do they talk to? What can they expect? You know, when can they hear an answer? Things like that um, laid out in writing. And there's templates out there, and they're very simple and easy to do. So luckily, so not, uh, not bylaws, procedures. Procedure. They're, they're policies. Actually, I think they're officially called policies. policies. Yeah. Okay. And those would be by town uh, fathers or by department? Because there are some areas where Usu trustees run the elements. But anyway, go ahead. Um, it's a good question. Usually, the select board approves the no no notice of non discrimination and the grievance procedure. So we're not and getting way down to elementary school level. No. It's this, like one. Yes. Got it. Usually, that's how it is. Maybe you might decide differently, but it's usually the standard. Thank you. Yes. Um, and then, in terms of other policies, we found that. All the departments are pretty knowledgeable of what's required under the American with Disabilities Act, which is great. Um, some more so than others. Um, the main, uh, I think, weakness we found is that not everyone knows what to do if someone needs um, a different type of communication procedure. Like in case someone needs an interpreter or braille or um, a CART, which is a uh, cartographic, I forget the acronym, but it's an um, audio yeah. translation device. Okay. Um, so if someone were to co go to a different department head and ask for this, they may not know exactly how to arrange for that. And so having a clear policy in town as to who to go to and here's your list of interpreters and things like that, what I think would be very helpful. Hmm. Um, and related to that, um, also people can come to the different departments and ask for reasonable accommodations. So if, say, you weren't allowed to have food in this room, but someone has diabetes and needs to have food, you can make that accommodation. Um, but sometimes accommodations can be an undue burden for the town. It could be more than the town is able to provide. And so having a policy is how do you make that decision about what's an undue burden would be helpful to the, your department head so that they know that they can actually say no and that's okay. Um, there are also templates out there for all of this, so we can, it's not, you don't, you don't have to reinvent the wheel on it. Um, but having that in place for your departments would be helpful to the town. So, after the exercise of field and policy review, what do we do well? You got it, actually, yeah. So, I'm, all I'm doing is finding your problems, right? No, no, you're defining them. I think that, that's helpful. Yes. You have opportunities, but at some I, point. So, I've done this now for a couple of other towns um, in the region, and your, the, your, I will say your department is very well knowledgeable about what is required under ADA. I, it, was, it was very nice to see people, what's required, what's... Um, People knew what's allowed as a, you know, a, a guide animal, things like that. Um, there's a, your, your town staff is very knowledgeable. There's just some weaknesses. Um, and in terms of infrastructure, I can, I think I've, oh, one last thing for programs and policies is your website is considered a program. Um, and your website's great, so that's a strength. Um, but you do have to, in, in the future, as things go and people become website administrators and staff changes, you have to make sure you're aware that that is considered a program and it needs huh. to be accessible. And you can check your website's accessibility through different online programs. You can just kind of run it through a checker. Yeah, the compliance for like colorblind and everything. Exactly, yep. yep. It has to be, the, the text has to be a certain size and color, things yep. like that, so people can visually read it. Um, or it can be translated audio relief. The things you learn. Yes. We've got an outside <laughs> firm that does the website. Yes. So and as long as, so as long, if you're ever doing a contract with web, for a new website firm, you have to make sure that's in the contract that your website is. I forget the code, but yeah, there's. It's, it's in here. I forget it yeah. as well. Um, uh, where'd it go? Hmm. Um, web content accessibility guidelines 2.0 A. Uh, it needs to be compliant with that on page nine. It's your website accessibility issues, yes. um, but that's a strength. So moving to infrastructure, um, you're, the town is actually in pretty good shape for a town of this size um, population. The buildings are in pretty good shape. There's a few issues, um, but with the library and the new public safety con complex, you guys are in pretty good shape regarding accessibility. If you go to page 11, I have put in a table um, kind of rated each building in terms of their accessibility. Um, and accessible and mostly accessible 
is defined as, and it's in here, is a person can enter the building, access the primary function of the building, and use the bathroom facilities. So that's great. To have a building uh, categorized as accessible and most accessible is great. Moderately accessible means they can access the primary function of, the, of that facility, but they may not be able to use the bathrooms. Right. So, um, but that, for a town park in Plainfield, that's, that's not too bad. That's um, not a huge issue. Inaccessibles, I'm pro you're probably aware that those three buildings, the Graves Memorial Library, the Highway Garage, and the Old Fire Station are inaccessible because of steps, um, mostly in doorway widths. Can we um, yeah. go to the Architectural Access <coughs> Board and ask for a <coughs> variance for like the Graves Building because it's historical? Yes, there, there is waivers you can get for historical buildings. Yeah. Um, and so for the highway garage, because their services are offered in an inaccessible building, technically the highway garage's services are inaccessible unless, say someone wants to discuss plans, mm -hmm. the highway department could come mm -hmm. here to an accessible building and discuss okay. those plans right. with them. If that service can be offered at an accessible location, then their program is accessible. Okay. But if it has to take place at the highway department or the garage for some, I don't know, maybe it's about a machine or something, then that that part of their services would be inaccessible. Would that be something captured in policy? Like, listen, for bid openings, exactly. they're they should be held here. Making a scenario yeah. off. Absolutely. Like held here. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so, what I've done is in, in this report, there is some big fold out pieces of, piece of paper. And for each of the buildings, you'll, there are issues that we've found. Um, and I've provided for each of those issues a recommendation as to how to fix it, and then I've assigned it a priority. Anything got a high priority if it prevents access to a building or prevents access to a bathroom. Otherwise, I've rated them in different ways. Um, and I've provided some time frames based on how easy I thought it could be fixed. If it just requires putting a handicap sign on a parking space, that's pretty easy to do versus installing an elevator at the Graves Memorial Library will be a little more difficult. Um, and then I've also assigned some relative costs. So if it's a fairly minor maintenance cost, such as installing a sign at the parking space, that's pretty minor, like that's the low cost, all the way up to high capital costs. Um, and then I've also uh, assigned a responsible department. And this I wasn't quite sure um, who would be responsible for all of these issues. For Things like such as Town Hall, I've assigned the Highway Department. Um, the schools, I assigned the school district. Um, but these can be these can be yeah, changed. We can and we're happy, I'm happy to dis yeah just have a discussion today as to who should be these um, responsible departments. And then I think either the Highway or the School Board is the responsible party for all of them. Um, I guess generally the Highway handles signage around the town. Sorry, okay, and then but I wasn't sure for internally at the school who would be school, responsible yeah, for that. School, yeah, that might Facilities be. Facilities manager or superintendent. Yeah, manager. yeah, I would think. So if I leave it as school district, think, that'll yeah. be an appropriate responsible person. Okay. Um, <clears throat> for all of the findings that I have done or found, other than those inaccessible buildings, which I've already noted, the issues that have been documented are fairly minor. You guys are actually in pretty good shape. <laughs> Um, there's no major structural changes that need to happen to say the town hall or the school. There were a lot of things I found in the school, but you'll see a lot of them are such as making sure that rugs are secure in the floors so people don't trip or that there's nothing blocking the side of a door so a wheelchair could go up and open the door fully. So it's, it's moving <coughs> a, a bookshelf, things like that. It's nothing so major. It's structural. Or, yeah. No, so it's, I mean. It's the, interesting well, about the rugs because they're not supposed to be rugs in the yeah, yeah, school. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, for, for I, I mean, from, from, from a mold standpoint when, and, a, and a quality of air standpoint, rugs were found to be, the last time we had a problem, rugs were, rugs were the number one um, batten sponges. Uh, old sponges, so they're not, they're not, and, and you're not supposed to, and, 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 <laughs> so. and again, the re, when you talk to a report that was done by H.L. Turner, who are an air expert, that were air quality expert, you're not supposed to have uh, upholstered furniture right. in a school either, mm -hmm. if you want to maintain good quality mm -hmm. of air. Right. You're not supposed to have rugs, you're not supposed to have upholstered chairs. Rotting pumpkins. 
Rotting, rotting pumpkin. pumpkin. <laughs> and, and sponges. Actually, you're calling them out. I did not mean that tongue in cheek. And, anyway. and, sp and sponges, and sponges, sponges that fall yeah. behind the, the back of the sink. So that was interesting that you say. Yeah, that they're back. Yeah. Potentially back. Potentially. It, it wasn't in all of the classrooms. I think it was for some of the more like therapy related yeah. classrooms. Right. So mm -hmm. it might be appropriate there, but just making sure if they are going to stay, they need to be secured. Yeah. Um, other issues were signage on doorways. Some of the times they didn't have the braille or the letters that need, could be touched tactile. Yeah. Those are fairly minor. The more expensive ones um, are the ADA stalls, just making sure that the latches latch properly. Um, the probably the most expensive for the schools was um, the toilets themselves, they might need to be replaced maybe on a rolling basis, but um, just because of the, the handle, the flush, flush handle needs to be on the right, the, the open side of the toilet. I'm going to go into the details unless yeah. you want me to, but. Can they just um, be replaced with the automated flush units? Yeah. And that's probably and the that easiest. That would work as well, yeah. yeah. So the good news is a lot of these are not huge capital costs. There's a lot of them. It might look very overwhelming, but um, it's, Many other towns are in much worse positions. You guys are in pretty good shape. Um, the highway garage is probably the most expensive in terms of making sure that that's accessible. Other than the Graves Memorial Library, but you may be able to get what waivers for that. Um, and then the old fire station is considered inaccessible, but because the program that's in it right now, the water department, is not a town program, then it's not really your concern. But if ever they were to move out, and you were to consider, say, putting the recreation department in there, that probably shouldn't because it's the building is inaccessible. Yeah. So as long as the building is, in this case here, annually leased out, the town's area of impact, I have to under, I'll have to understand that a little differently. Yeah. So, Mr. I, Chair, if I could, I'd, I'd like to sell that building. Well, I'm with you on that. Mm -hmm. I, I think we should uh, enter into discussion with, with uh, with the water district and or the Blue Heron. I, I, I know what our, yep. I believe that Blue Heron has a, the first right, but. They do? I mean, I mean, we held on to it because we didn't know it was gonna happen, but I'm pretty sure we know now that we don't need that building. Effective town use. It actually came up as well in the buildings review uh, uh, for the capital planning committee. Yep. Right? If you don't have a use for it, get rid of no it. No sense holding on to it. So you're not going to build another old fire station. You have one, right? So it was, it was interesting. Well, I, I mean, I, I mean, what what if I mean what if the water department moved out? What would we do? Pave, knock it down and pave it. Right from a liability perspective, blacktop's a lot less of a problem than that building. And yeah, because right now we don't we don't have a, don't have a, a use need. For it. And, and I mean, limited park. It's limited parking. It, yep. I mean, I mean, it suits their purposes really well. But correct for Good the point. town, there's not a lot. There's a lot. So I would, I would think that we should start. You know, maybe ask Sherry to reach out to them and see what mm -hmm. they think. Start that process. Yeah. Put it up for RFQ. We'll start the discussion now. Yeah. Good point. Firehouse Brewery. <laughs> no parking. <laughs> right. There's already no parking. You have to walk <laughs> to earn your beer. Exactly right. <laughs> Good point, um, Jim. So that is the major findings. Um, I'm happy to go through the entire report and talk about any details or questions you have, but um, there's, there were some issues with sidewalks. The most of the issues with sidewalks were on North Main Street, which will be- It's gonna be right, fixed, that's so addressed, that's, yeah. Well, you're in good shape there. Um, I mean, there are definitely issues throughout town with some sidewalks of curb ramps and things like mm -hmm. that. But importantly, all of the sidewalks coming to your main civic buildings, the town hall, the library, are in good shape. Yeah, cool yeah. So if they want to access those services, then then that's in good shape. Good. So, yeah. Well, it's always a little daunting to get 11 by 17s double, <laughs> double sided with 400 <laughs> columns in them. Go, well, but it feels so good to print out. in good shape. I hate to see what somebody yeah. in bad the shape gets. Other towns are much thicker, <laughs> yes. And there's a lot more dollar signs, so you guys are, it's, take heart. Um, but I'm, if, yeah. I, if I could ask uh, Sherry uh, as, as, as well uh, as Megan, grant opportunities for this kind of work. Some of this, as you said, is well within the reach and the grasp of the town. It's not that <laughs> big a deal. But some of these clearly like sidewalks, um, questions maybe about large scale potential 
at the elementary <coughs> school if that ends up being what, what's out there for accessibility grants that this would end up help justify ADA has an implementation grant for um, it's through the Mass Office of Disability for implementation up to two hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. Complete streets, streets addresses streets, some of the say, yeah. sidewalks. So stuff like the, been, for the right. Yeah. Um, the working on that as well. So CDBG Community Development Block Grant yeah. um, for some of it. Any, anything else you got? Um, I wonder if we could use CPA funds yeah. at all too, depending on the CPA building. Media. Or the yes, issue. absolutely. CPA. If it if it's a you know, if it's part of the historic, building. yeah, historic like the horror. graves. I'm yeah. thinking <laughs> specifically for CPA. <coughs> so we have a number of options. And recreation and parks. Yes. Good point. Yep. The, like I, the town park, the bathrooms there, and the um, path to a you could use a path to the pavilion. Yep. Maybe some new picnic tables that accommodate wheelchairs. Yep. CPA would might be able to help with that. Yeah. So there is pots of money out there to tap as well. Okay, yeah. okay. that's good. And with respect to this, now that we're we're in the in the know, right? We have a transition plan and an evaluation plan that's complete. Uh, we choose to accept it. And what's the timeline for rolling this out, or is this a living document? Do we come back to this in ten years or five years yeah, and go, okay, how'd you do? It's <coughs> definitely a living document. I would I would keep checking right. on it every year. Okay. Maybe when you do your um, capital improvement yep. plan, yep. take a look at it. Um, I also though there things are prioritized in terms of a time frame. There's a time frame assigned to each one. Um, I've, what we've done is short, medium, long, and so it goes out zero okay. to four years, five to nine, or ten plus years. So there's a general time frame of when you might expect to be able to accomplish those, okay. um, and these can be updated as necessary. But that does provide the public an idea of when they might get tackled these Great. issues. I almost wonder if like it would be a sort of another aspect of like uh, our capital improvements. Yeah, stuff. elements of it certainly are. They're like the bigger yeah, pieces. I, I wrote down in here, integrate these into the into yeah. larger capital portfolio. And, it, and some of these may already be included in that. Yeah. Excellent. Questions of uh, May, uh, Megan, Tom, David? All set, Scott. Thank you. Yeah, I think I'm good. Great. Came in on a summer afternoon, gave us a bunch of work to do. Right. Nice. <laughs> sure, go ahead. Questions. Please. Um, um, first of all, this is wonderful. Yeah, right. Thank you Thank so you. much. It's really great. I'm, I'm on the planning board, by the way, so I'm doing a, you know, did a lot of plans, and it's, it's, but it's, it's really great to have. Thank you. Um, and I'm also chair of the CPC, so it's a good kind of roadmap for us. Um, um, I, one, a couple of comments. I just, I haven't seen it before, so I just kind of scanned through it. But there's a structural issue with this, which is um, that the playing fields back here are part of Riverside Park. They're not separate. Okay. I, they're, I, yeah, they're, the, uh, Riverside Park encompasses the okay, playing good field and okay. the, so, um, uh, and I, so the, the, these bathroom buildings out here, we consider that a high priority as far as the Park goes because we, you know, put all this work into creating this accessible space, that's and smart. people are really using it. Um, so that's kind of, um, you know, we look at that at the, as the next, you know, next step. Steps, yeah. Um, um, and and it's a pretty high priority okay. because. Um, and I oh, actually, you said you made all the bathroom access high priority, but it says medium priority. So, um, maybe because it was a. Uh, Playing field. It wasn't um, a bit, a oh, bit. like, like a it was like yep. you're not going to a town clerk or um, oh, I see, vital okay. documents, they things like that. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it, it, but it certainly it could amend that if the town feels it's a problem. It, it, and it's it seasonal priority. use too, probably yeah. in that respect yeah. too. Yeah, it's only open when the when there are games, on. and sometimes the library is open at the same time, so people can use that. Yeah, uh, that's true. Good point. Um, but sometimes it isn't. Um, and, and one other tiny little thing that I saw is the town park is on um, Park Road, not North Silver. It says North Silver. Okay. Oh, they might be talking about the other town park, though. The, huh? the other town park? Yeah, it says North Silver Lane. Town Park Road. Yeah. It's on it's technically Park Road. Road. Yeah, just a tiny, sorry. Nope, that's fine. Sorry. I can make this change. I'm a recovering that's editor. Her, I was going to say, that's your inner <laughs> editor it right now. It caught my <laughs> eye. Um, Peter? I'm sorry. Sorry, are you all set? Peter's going to yep. stand up. That's it. In, in your uh, survey of the town department, did you include the pool in that or I not? Did. 
who did you the contact? principal because with the school a lot of you know it's it's its own school it's you know it's, it's but it's part of a district at the same time and so the website policies uh administrative people all that you know that's all part of the district and i'm assuming you didn't for example go through the website of the of the district or maybe you did no, I did not actually go through the websites, the, but the, the principal did contact the web administrator for, to determine it's accessible, that they, he, they do go through and make sure that, that it is accessible, their um, administrator, website administrator. And he filled out those pro programs best he could for the school district. Okay, great. Yeah. Great. Any questions for Megan? Great. Well, thanks. You got the, it left us a great deal to uh, build off of, and that's a good thing. Great. I yep. submit to Maude and to um, Sean at DOI. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much for your work. Right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay. Thank you, Megan. Right Thank you. Uh, Peter? Just one more thing on this, and that is that often these grants have a certain cycle of the calendar year as to when the applications need to be in by. And it doesn't seem like the kind of thing where we have any reason to, you know, hold back on trying kind to of absolutely go right. Stuff, so. Thank you. It's something that we'll have, have uh, the administrator <coughs> yeah, take, a, take a look at what the cycle is because you're right. There's we could be looking at whatever application date is. Right. Try to get as much of the easy, low-hanging fruit identified. We can self-perform, and then well, what do we need for the grant and this is the foundation for that. Yeah, we have to submit to the Mass Office of Disability our plan and to the um, Department of Revenue because they gave us the community compact yep. Yep. grant yep. to do yep. the plan. So, yep. um, and then we can apply. Yeah. In fact, that's another that's another shout out to the, the, the current administration of the Commonwealth. No politics, just that that community compact component has been really good for lots mm -hmm. of municipalities. Yeah, the technical assistance is right. so that we can develop best practices and to have good planning documents. You can't write grants without good planning documents. And so we really are getting our ducks in a row and able to jump on all that stuff as it comes up. Really so. quite helpful. Yeah. And the services we get. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks. Thank okay. We're almost going to be on time. <laughs> Damn it. Three minutes. Luke Erickson. Please stand up. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Simon Says? <laughs> <laughs> so you want to come in and have a bit of a shindig at the Wild Roots. Yes. And before we even get involved with the shindig, you have exactly one minute for a shameless plug for Wild Roots. Okay. Go. It's, um, it's a fast casual eatery uh, in town, breakfast, lunch. Seven days a week, uh, 6.30 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon. Weekdays, 8 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon on the weekends. And uh, we try to make good food as best we can. And we absolutely do. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that. Thank you. So you're coming uh, before the board for a dance and entertainment license. Yes. Um, I don't believe there will be dancing, um, but you never know. It's... Uh, <laughs> It there could be. be. I was waiting for the jokes <laughs> to start on that. <laughs> um, essentially, what I'm trying to do is I've got a friend of mine <clears throat> who's going to come in and play his guitar. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a simple acoustic thing. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, no staging, no, no lights. There might be some minimal PA system set up. Um, but I'm, I'm also looking for the license because I'm feeling like maybe it's an opportunity to do these kinds of things more regularly. Mm -hmm. um, not like a weekly thing or even a monthly thing, but just occasionally. Um, I am ticketing the event due to cost for the performer as well as to minimize um, the capacity problems that we have over there and parking problems that we may have. Um, so it's really just to try to limit um, everything you know so it doesn't just get overflowing and we've got a couple hundred people over there and it's kind of chaos you know okay. so um so the intention is to set the capacity to 
the legal limit that's allowed for the room in which it's going to be in. So uh, this is our, which is our back seating area. So all indoors. All indoors. Okay. That's important to bear in mind. That's not called out necessarily here. But 20 yeah, to 25 so people. Yep. Sound system for the space if it's needed. Yeah. Um, in terms of, I don't know if he's going to want to um, have a PA for his voice and guitar. I'm not okay. entirely sure. It's it's very small space, so I don't know if that's really necessary. Okay. Um, and then you know, kind of looking forward, again, looking for a similar kind of arrangement down the road, perhaps. Um, the same kind of acoustic performance, no DJs, no cloud PA systems and things of that sort. Questions of the board? Um, I, actually, I, Luke, I, I, would, I, I hope that you, you're able to make it a daily thing <laughs> over there. Um, and, and I guess that, that's, that, that's my only concern a concern um, <clears throat> is that I think we need to be specific on um, the where the entertainment can take place mm -hmm. and the and the hours that it can take yeah. place as yep. well. Um, so the hours will be in concert with your hours of operation. Correct. You're not asking for any extension. I'm not asking for any extension. Okay. Well, <clears throat> yeah, and, and see, and, and I'd ra I'd rather. I'd, I'd rather if 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 you think let's mm -hmm. say like you said you get done at three three thirty right now well maybe you want to have an after dinner performance okay and 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 I I, I could see that as a, a natural extension of, of what you're what you're doing now you know you mm -hmm. you may have a, a, a six o'clock performance six to eight or you know and just have a light light refreshments or so, so I, I, I guess what I'm saying, Mr. Chair, is I kind of like to somehow understand how we and 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 again, when we have a license, it's not we don't we don't consider us onesies or twosies because you could have it every day. Mm -hmm. So, so we got we, we want to try to make it consistent, or it, you know you you could sell and someone else takes over. So I think that may have different ideas than you do That's true. and 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 they still have to come back for the license but it'd be hard to pull back <clears throat> so may, maybe mr. chair if we could set reasonable hours to operations like you know businesses like no later than yeah such and I, such I, a time. I, I would and again I don't want to restrict you no, I, I I, but I but I want to just Protect us on sure. on the on the long run. So you say no later than you know ten thirty, eleven o'clock at night. Yeah, that's have, fine if that's what we choose. I just that have establishments in town that have music have a later closing time, but no definition of the actual entertainment time. Correct. I think what you're describing <coughs> here is you may want to because there's no under a common vic. You you, know, you can stay open till. You know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, right. Yeah, I remember. I believe that that is. Because you're, uh, you're, not, you're not serving alcohol. You're not doing any of that stuff. Common bit. You could be 24/7. Yeah. Right. Under just that statute. The question there. The zoning officer's right there, nodding. So I think I got that part right. To to Tom to, to Tom's point, if if it, if we were to say you know no later than 11 p.m. stop, and then if you get through 2019 and find out that that was good, great. Yeah. Uh, if it's needs to be more than that I don't see that happening but well and, and again and, and, and again then then what we can do is if you if you put an end time Correct. on it right and then you know there's something that the neighbors may maybe right. they can actually I, actually call for for clarification it's like Jesus they were there till 1 30 in the morning what the hell is going on Right, and, and 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 so I just I would just like to put an end yep. time there. And eleven o'clock is fine, yep. you know. Ten thirty, whatever whatever we say is yep. fine. I, I just like I just like to somehow and 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 define and define um, you know that it all has to be contained inside the building because mm -hmm. once it moves outside the building, I think you. It's a you, whole other animal. That's and a and again, I don't. Effect, so I yeah. personally don't have a problem if it goes outside outside the building. Um, and and I think if you look at um, Northampton, Amherst, and, and places, 
you know, it's fine. I, I, I think outdoor seating is fine, and, and but it's just there's a level, you know, what what are we? What's our level of expectation? Right. I guess that's all I'm. So so with with that with that in mind, if we were to take uh, the three elements, right? What this is already for indoors. You mentioned outdoors, and time, right? And days of the week. Right. Or, so what, what would you? What would be the straw man? You're open. You're open seven days. So seven days a week. Yes, okay. Sir. So seven days mm-hmm. indoors. Any particular issues come in with that? Not with that part of it. No. Right. And, and, <clears throat> and you can say indoors now. Yep. And and if you choose and if you choose just to. If it's an overwhelming, ex- and, and again, I, I don't know why you wouldn't want outdoor seating. Right. But then, then all of a sudden it says, okay, we want to modify our permit. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. That's just another. So, so if you say right now, if we don't say anything, yeah. if, then 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 what, what would happen is you start moving outside and says, well, you don't exclude it. Right. 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 You know what I mean? But that's, if you say mm-hmm. now it's inside the building, um, and in, and Luke finds that he it's the best thing he's ever done, and 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 then he wants to to extend it because everybody wants to sit outside in sure. December. Sure. You know. Oh, yeah. You could roll those doors open, and sit outside yeah. under the sun. Well, you got the big propane heaters exactly right. and stuff. But yeah, I yeah. I just if I, if I could, we have we happen to have the zoning enforcement officer right here. So your 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 footprint in your your common vic is essentially <coughs> preparation is defined. Seating and serving is defined. That includes some outside tables. Yes, there's a, right. yep. yeah, there is. So, yep. in an entertainment component, right? If the doors in the, I'll use the middle bay because that's how I remember it, right? The middle bay doors swing open and six tables show up outside. Is is the footprint of his common vit in conflict with that application? Now, I'm thinking about. Uh, a to serve license, like when we get an L, as a lic- local licensing authority, we would define the area. Yes. For a common vet, it necessarily, it's not necessarily the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's the address. The big trigger would be about public service. Right. That's what would you know, trigger yep. the barriers. And yep. Like yep. That. yep. Yep. And he doesn't have that anyway. Right. So to Tom's point, if it's coffee on a Sunday afternoon and he's got a three-piece jazz band sitting out there. We don't have to define the outside space like you would if it was a serving environment. Okay. Because you just create your seating area. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, the doors spin open. You see it all over. Oh, yeah, doors, exactly. doors roll up and the music starts pouring out and you've got six or ten tables outside. Yes. Right. Right? Yeah. So how would you like to phrase, um, we don't have to define the space. We have to say indoor and outdoor. Well, do you... You don't think you need to define the space? I mean, if if you're if you have neighbors, well, we pet, have certainly got neighbors for consideration. Or shouldn't there be a certain level of expectation for the neighbors? Yep. And and it, it's it's different. And I mean, it basically when like when Seven O's or O's or whatever the name of the building when they built their patio. Yep. I mean, patio. We 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 had a very. Uh, interesting discussion with them about how noise carries yep. you know because because why you may not think it if you have a band out on the deck of the of the o's mm-hmm. you you could typically you can definitely hear it on silver lane right. it could extend to to russell street sure. as well just as easily yep. so quiet summer night you're right so i i, I don't know you know i i just you, and again you just want, i just think we want to try to you know for protect the business mm-hmm. um, because there's a certain there's when they enter into something like that I think the better defined you are then that keeps everyone out of trouble so let's pivot to <coughs> the easy one time mm-hmm. you don't want to be there later than 11 ever in your life no <laughs> try to get it just put a cap on 11 <laughs> I think that's I think that's fine perfect. okay so a motion to include 11 p.m. as Ending or close ending any any music. Motion. Second. Okay. If it's okay with you, Lou. Yeah, it's great. No, I appreciate and it. And again, Thanks I just for, yeah. Thanks for right. working it out. Yeah. That All those in cool. favor of 11 p.m. as it's Aye. a cap. Aye. Three to zero, please. Okay. Second. Right now, you're asking for inside. It's called out specifically inside low or no mm. excessive sound systems. I like that low or no excessive sound systems. That's pretty straightforward. Um, capacity for 20 to 25 people. Um, 
is there any reason we would not take leave the language acoustic performance no lights no pyrotechnics no excessive sound systems ticketed capped capacity right and and take the capacity number off at 20 to 25 that's fine if you moved outdoors you could have 20 yeah. people sitting outside yeah i mean i would i would love to be able to open the doors and have okay. that extra outdoor seating i was more okay. thinking in in the in the lines of mm -hmm. our legal capacity and, and yeah. limits and parking sure. and just trying to consider all that. Life safety inside that space. Absolutely. I still totally get that. Yeah. Okay. So we'll take the capacity people off, okay. knowing that if it's indoors, you have a limit anyway. You can only seat so many people regardless. This, True. this doesn't change that. Right. Okay. And you're going to open the doors that allow us some seating outdoors. Tom, I think the language in there, no excessive sound systems, is pretty easily enforced, right? No lights. Well, I think I think it goes back to our our noise ordinance. Yeah, exactly. Yep. We've got that, got that in already. place already. Right. Okay. So indoor, outdoor. Can we add the term outdoor as well? I'm not trying to tell you you got to do it, but no, if, you, if one day that. it's like huh. yeah, if it's beautiful out and I want to open doors, open doors, and there's extra that. tables. Absolutely. Okay. I'm more created this with one event in mind, mm -hmm. but we're well, you asking for you're you asking know. for an annual license. No, I know. So if no, we think so about it. Correct. No, it, no, this is the right way to okay. build it out, and I appreciate it. Indoor, that. outdoor? Okay. A motion to include outdoor? A uh, motion. Second. <coughs> okay. And with respect to the, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. Okay. Anything else with respect to that? Now, your, your, your piece here says closed off to the general public. Right. On your request. Again, it's... It's um, because it's one event. It's you're specific for. to this event, and it's mm -hmm. something that I was, <clears throat> I was more concerned that to kind of have it all kind of crash down on the day of. Yeah, totally. You know that I was like, all right, I got to do this. Right, like, right. Right, you know, it's right. Fifty dollar license. I was like, I'm going to get this out of the way, but it doesn't mean that I'm not. I would love to see this as a real okay. annual. You know, to revise it the way you guys are, I really appreciate it because okay. it does open that door to more possibilities. So. Yes, close off to the general public because of tickets, because of capacity, mm -hmm. because of that concern of I don't want like to try to squeeze two hundred people inside there. So you know, if it could get absurd, if we it don't, was free, or he doesn't, you know, or the cops yeah. don't. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I right. said that's why I said the general public because right. it is it is going to be ticketed this particular event. But we could do free ones that are local artists or things of that nature that um, we don't expect to draw a crowd from. Preference of language. So right here, this is for uh, one one particular, but again, it's an annual, and that's that's the, a bit of a trap right here. You probably would have removed that, I would think. Then you limit. Okay. So with that said, could I ask you because we have other agenda items? Could I ask you and Sherry to work out the language about the general public piece, okay. and then uh, we can vote contingent on language as appropriate. Mm -hmm. Sure. So we've included an ending time no later than 11 p.m. You'll never do it. And if you do, don't go past 11. Uh, in include uh, the outdoor piece. And remember, you've got neighbors with parking, so you got to pay attention to that. Uh, and then with respect to a ticketed event closed off to the general public, uh, you can work on that language here. Again, you're asking for something that's an annual license. Okay. Any other questions or discussions about that? Motion. Uh, second. Motion and second to approve this license as uh, presented and modified. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero. All right. Best of luck to you on that. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Guys. Okay. And speaking of special licenses, <laughs> how are you this fine day? Thanks so much. Talk to her in the morning about that last piece of language so I can be documented. What is it you want to do that's awesome? <laughs> Sunderland's getting pretty cool, huh? Sunderland has been cool forever. <laughs> yes, I agree. Um, so we have an application for a couple of licenses for one day liquor, uh, actually beer and wine okay. license. Um, so the most immediate is this Sunday. We're doing a farm dinner mm -hmm. uh, at Kitchen Garden Farm. A collaboration with Little Truck. Uh, the food truck, so we're doing a Thai grilled chicken menu. Nice. Um, and we'll have local beer and natural wine mm -hmm. in addition. 
So we had a couple of other farm dinners on the calendar, so I just put the application in to cover all those dates, so I don't have to come in every month. Um, <laughs> it is the season. Yeah. So um, there's another date in July and another date in August for farm dinners, yep. different menus, different concepts, but a um, similar idea. Okay. And then Chili Fest as a separate matter, yep. September 14th. So this is the first time, uh, uh, Caroline, for farm dinners at this at your location. So this is the second so time we've done a farm yeah. dinner um, okay. application. Yeah. So that was the first one was in May. Okay. Oh, that's right. We did vote that. Sorry. Yeah. Great. And you're asking for uh, three more: 20, June 23, July 21, August 10. Same concept. Exactly. Okay. And with the applications, we got our checklist. Everybody weighed in, wondering if there's still tickets available. You know, I just heard that we're sold out. Congratulations. Um, we sold 50 tickets. Good so, for you. Um, trying to, you know. So, Chief of Police, sorry the tickets are sold out. Yeah. Um, well. No, no. <laughs> you want to work? You want to no, no. work? <laughs> I say um, that tongue in cheek. That's yeah, part so of our we're, checklist. We're experimenting. Um, the last dinner we did uh, 30 seats, mm -hmm. 32 seats, I think. And this time we're doing 50 yep. and just trying to see what's a comfortable scale right. okay. to do it at. That people can get to know each other and chat and you know kind of be cohesive and put out good food. Nice. Questions about uh, the three uh, on-site dinner affairs? Any? No, no, not off the top of my head. Okay. Uh, motion to approve. That's June 23, July 21, August 10, Kitchen Garden uh, Farm Dinners. Uh, motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Three to zero, please. Okay. Now, Chili Fest, a thousand people. So far, every year we've exceeded that a little bit. That's um, great. Yeah. Um, so September 14 and 15, uh, two-day hot pepper festival. Um, we do a local beer tent. Um, we also include artisan beverage co-op, so they're using mm -hmm. um, I've just spoken with Nicole from Cars Cider, and they are interested nice. in as well, so I wrote cider on. I wasn't sure if that qualifies as beer and wine. I think that's covered under the beer and malt, right? Well, cider? or is we'll that add it? We we'll have wine. to add categories ourselves because okay. we're, yeah. we're getting into that point. Yeah, check the box. Yeah. But thank you. Great. And Chili Fest is. So it's at Mike's Maze, 12 to 5 p.m. Saturday and Sundays. Brilliant. Woo Yay! <laughs> Questions about Chili Fest? I hear it's going to be hot. It's going to be a hot time. Oh, love it. Bum. Bum, bum. Tom, any questions? Chili Fest? Sherry, what's the, what's the, uh, the, the fee for an uh, alcohol license? I believe it's $50. For, for a, a beer and wine. Isn't it $100? $300, so it's $50. Is it $50? $100 per, per, per Mm -hmm. $100 per event for a max of 10 per year, but well, that, that's what that's what that's why that's why I'm asking. I, I mean, for someone like for for someone that's doing that, we should we should make a we we should reconsider what our two things. A is there a license that that they could <clears throat> could mm -hmm. request from the sure. town? Or is that an well, you mentioned thing? there is an annual license. I think she said it was something like seven hundred dollars, but I'm not sure. I didn't that's that. for a full license. I don't think that's a cost yeah. for a, a, a beer and wine. I think wine. there are seasonal licenses. I can look into that. But could, so maybe you could follow follow up on that, and 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 that may be advantageous to to her, you know, to the the farm, and and and, and to us. I, I mean, and again, when you're trying to you're promoting want to try to promote business in town um, we shouldn't be making them jump through hoops that they don't need mm -hmm. and and you're a little different um, because we haven't had those requests in the past yeah, there um, are and, or, and or we we could also look at a seasonal a seasonal license a seasonal beer and wine license also I don't know if we have those in our yeah, in our table, see. but we may we may consider putting a seasonal license in effect, uh -huh. and that way you you would apply once for for the summer or for 
six months or eight, whatever, whatever the date is. So could we look into that, Sherry, and maybe work work, work, with, Car work with Carolyn for next year? Because you'll probably want eight or nine of them next year. You got to get farming done too. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In between all the parties. <clears throat> but but if we could look, look if we could look at that, okay. I, I think it may be advantageous for 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 you guys. Especially if they're just doing beer and wine. I, I and again this I think and again I we probably don't have as many up here, but they they have, they're quite common on the Cape. Uh -huh. we will be more efficient about it. Yeah. Well, and again, you know, we're we're looking at new ground, so we have to. Yep. So develop seasonal event license. And uh, and we're the events. yeah we're the yeah. licensing authority. So what is what is what is a fee schedule look we, like we, for that? We could add a classification. Mm -hmm. That's true. Well put. Tom. Okay. So uh, that said, any more discussion with respect to Chili Fest? Aye. 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 Three to zero, please. I know the state of Vermont does seasonal licenses with a, a cap of the number of events. I'll make the motion too, just I think we missed that part. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just Okay. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Have a great time. We'll get back to you with respect to the seasonal license piece okay. and we'll yep. work with you on that for the future. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thanks very much. We're almost on time. Wait a minute, we're ahead of schedule. That's awesome. We are a couple minutes. Couple minutes. Public comment. I was just saying because I saw that you're going to be talking about the um, the mass DOT CIP. Okay. Do you want me to wait? No, please. We'll have that as an agenda item. Any public comment? Public comment? Should I talk about that now or wait? No, it's going to be an agenda okay. item. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Minutes from our last meeting. That'll be June 3rd, and then we'll get right to 7:30. Uh, motion on the minutes. Second. Jeez, that was the last time. Senior planner for the COG was here. It's like we go into summer yeah. mode, and every other week the COG shows up with another planning thing for us. <laughs> All right, we have a motion made and seconded for the minutes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero. Okay, so seven thirty. Meetings in the off weeks. Exactly. Meetings in the off weeks. <laughs> so they get the work done. Yep. Tammy, you want to talk about eighty-eight North Mountain Road signage? I'm good. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. I'll move forward. Come yeah. on up. Thanks. Um, I have a dance studio on 88 North Mountain, which I've had for many, many, many years. Yeah. And um, since GPS has come into play for people and Claybrook Road got developed, people get to the end of Claybrook and their GPS tells them to go left. Even as far back as Mr. Hines, when he taught music, I was teaching um, a dance for him to teach the students, he came up. His GPS told him to go left. He did. His muffler got ripped off. He came down, rah, 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 and he was like, what the heck? And it's just gotten worse <clears throat> where I've had moms calling me with kids up in the mountain over and over and over. And um, hmm. so I just think it's pretty dangerous. Mm -hmm. So I purchased signs for, that said Mountain View Dance with an arrow yep. and put it up, and it got stolen. And I talked to the highway department. We put up another one. A third one made, he came and put it up right onto the actual um, Claybrook post. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was like, screwed it, that one got taken. So I said, this, I, I tried to do my best, I'm not doing any more now. We can't, he doesn't want to put up any kind of barrier because it's an old logging road, right. which I understand. But I feel like a sign could be put up pointing because either saying something like logging road and road because it's confusing. Right. And he said, well, they should be able to see it's not a logging road. But at this point, I can honestly say there's been at least 30 families that have driven up there thinking it's North Mountain. And because they logged up there, um, I want to say the summer before last, somebody put a triangular sign on a tree that says North Mountain Road, which I mean, they went up before it was there too, sure. but now it's just even, I think, a little more confusing. So what I would ask is that there be some sort of definition sign. From the Claybrook side or from? By from Claybrook. Side? From Claybrook side. It's Claybrook that's the problem, I think. I don't think when they come up the other way, mm -hmm. um, because I did it with my car, 
And even in my car, when you get to the end of Claybrook, it says go left. Now, I don't know how hard it is. If you look to the right, I have a sign on my property. Yep. It's not big because it's a residential area, so I try to keep it kind of, you know, sedated. But you can see it, mm -hmm. I think. And they still go, you know, they go left because more and more people are getting accustomed to listening to Genius. what a machine tells them to do sure. and not jumping into the common sense arena because once you start getting up there and you start, you know, going over rocks, right. they keep going. But I walked up there today and, I, and um, a car came down, like people are driving up there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, kids have always partied up there. Sure. But this is like, they were two older gentlemen coming down the road and I'm like, are you lost? They're like, no, I think we got it. I said, okay. <laughs> Pick up their muffler for them on the yeah. way out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, sure, you talked to George about this once already. And Tammy, you've reached out to George as well? Oh my well. gosh, several times. Okay. I've given him letters. Okay. I sent you guys messages on your little board going, okay. somebody, Do I think it's a problem. Okay. I'm gonna have one of those signs that just shows the road going that way you know the main paved road anyway mm -hmm. oh, might be some options okay Tom mm -hmm. any thoughts um we're not going to discontinue because that's that that's another no I, and, and I thought about the sign unmaintained road but mm -hmm. you can't really say that so um, I don't know what the right wording would be on the sign would it make sense for us to have a, a site visit we can do we can do site visits you know we can post for a site visit meet George up there and understand just what what the yeah. complexities are oh I well I mean although you you know what Scott I, I mean we have signs on different thing that says roads not maintained in winter right um, maybe we could put one of those signs here Remove the word winter. Go ahead. Is it possible to put a sign that says the logging road? No, it, it's a town road yeah, so it's or a county road, road or somebody. Oh, he's saying it's it, well. I don't know. I'm just saying what the highway guy told me. Yeah. So, so we we, we could put up one of those signs, Scott, that says not maintained. Road not maintained. Passenger road. Road's <clears throat> not maintained in the winter. Okay. You know what I mean? I do. Let so. Me, I'm actually working up in the deep in the bowels of Huntington tomorrow. I'll look at a few signs up there. We have a similar situation near the job site of mine. Yeah, look and see what that. But I, th I think we could we could there. put something like that up. Do right. we maintain that in any shape? Uh -huh. So yeah. we make it make sure it's we ensure it's passable in years past. It was passable when? In in uh, well, we haven't had a we haven't had a, a mountain road discussion with George in a couple three years anyway. We yeah, because nobody went on that road yeah. for years. Mm -hmm. I mean, years and years and years. Yeah. Maybe we just mark and it as And somehow we got onto some road. hiking trail. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden people started showing up and parking and everybody started hiking and sort of blazing yeah, a little more. The trail maps were done a number of years back. Sarah? Just going to mention that um, I'm chair of the Community Pathways Committee and we're, we're finishing up the park and we're, we're turning our attention now to Mount Toby. Mm -hmm. And um, we are, um, our next step is going to be a, um, a kind of conceptual plan for how to connect the town to the mountain. Um, and um, Carla's is going to be probably working on that with us. Um, so, uh, we, we are already kind of looking forward to having a town-wide discussion about the mountain roads and, um, you know, and signage and, and all of that. You should talk to the CONCOM because yeah. a number of years back we did um, trail maps and everything and then there was a lot of work done at the time talking to landowners about who wanted right. what marked and who and what didn't so that might help with yeah. that too. Some complaints from some of the owners up there because they didn't really want people on their land, but yet yeah, there was that so trail. Maybe like unmaintained. The Middle road. Mountain Road is is kind of starting to fall apart a little bit too. Okay, so well, two, the, two. the roads are falling apart because they don't. When when I was a kid, everyone didn't have a four wheel drive vehicle, right. right? Yeah, and they didn't have 
they were they were not four wheel ATVs and UTVs and and a lot of those other vehicles. So the road the roads back then the they were used by people that were there was three sugar camps up there. And there was also the electrical lines that were um, maintained, and also your hunters, the hunters, when I was a kid, when I hunted up there, we would, I, but <clears throat> there was not a lot of traffic. Today, it's much different. Now, in, in the good years, would ride their horses up there, and people would walk their dogs, and now Peter Gagarin would run up there. Um, Tom would run his dog sled up there and take Tammy's uh, crystal with a dog sled with the girls, but it was mu it was used much differently than it's used today. Today, today every there's a everybody like I said many many more people have four wheel drive. Before on four wheel drive, you just have to get out and and go out and lock your hubs. Now you yeah. don't have to do that. So. And if I can say one of the other problems, um, I try to go up at least once a month with my trash bags to pick up because. There are people that are dumping up there, sure. like really upsettingly dumping, like tires and leaves with big tarps. Now that did not happen back in even '98. Right. They couldn't get up there to do it. I mean, Johnny had his dirt bike that he could get up there, and they used the snowmobiles to make a packed path for people. But that that was it. We didn't have yep. people going up there that way. So. Yep. I know. So it has changed. Yeah. It has changed. Some better, some worse. Right. Like anything. So we may ask George to put up a, we could ask him to put up a not maintained in the winter. Right. And that that may dissuade people, but I mean, Tammy's already put up three signs. They've taken those signs. I would, I would say that the fourth sign. But mine sign, aren't like, you know, I don't have like a town constructed sign. I'd lean towards not maintained period. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I. You know, just I to discourage, right. because especially if we're having, because that brings up whole other issues. If there's dumping going on right. up there, we need to do something about that too. Okay. So, so over the next couple of weeks, you'll see some signs up there. We'll meet with George about yep. not That's maintained, and <coughs> we'll monitor the progress. Correct. With respect to, you know, people up there trashing it. Given the opportunity, people will resign to do the stupidest possible thing. I'm a firm believer in that. Yeah. So we'll see if we can see uh, we'll work George, on that. George, he's just like, well, if they're dumb enough to go up there, right. they can get stuck. I'm like, yeah, I, I don't think that's the right answer, answer, but okay. I get you. <laughs> I can yeah. sympathize. All right. Thanks for bringing it to our attention, and we'll work on that in the next okay. couple of weeks. I'm good. Sure. I can leave. Bingo. I'm dismissed. All right. Thanks Thank so you so much. People Thank need you. to remember that all wheel drive is not the same as four wheel drive. You like, you know. Is it inappropriate for me to give you a hug? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we've got uh, select board updates. There's an aggregation piece. I think Aaron's here for. Let's talk about building permit fee increases. Straight up, the building inspector gave us two schedules a couple of weeks ago. And is there any questions with regard to the fee schedules <clears throat> that uh, are being presented? And which option do you want to do, Mr. <coughs> Building Commissioner? I mean, they can be combined. I just threw up, you know, a couple different options. Okay. My feedback um, in Southampton is that, you know, I have, you know, my personal cells out there, so everybody's calling that now. We yep. have services yep. there that they, you know, and it's the same here. It's, it's majority are good good people good contractors that realize they're getting the service and um, you know it's a big jump to go to the higher one but they I've had them actually say they appreciate you know the service they're getting and, and now that we're going online it's going to help cover the, you know the service um, that as well and that speeds up and gives them a lot better quicker response as well <clears throat> Tom and David any input questions I'm trying to remember the last time we adjusted these. How many years has it been? Two, two or three, three years. Yeah. Yeah, I, November 2016. 16, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, almost three years. So, mm -hmm. especially with the low volume that we have, honestly, you know, mm -hmm. I think. And and the homework homework you've done as well keeps uh, Tom <coughs> done keeps us in line with other municipalities of our size and in our area. Right. 
It's not like, not like we're going out tip of the spear here and charging millions. Yeah. We're, we're in line. Questions, Tom? I, I personally think that Sunderland has uh, <coughs> being to have inspectional services in town is a uh, is a uh, tremendous service to our residents and and if you anybody's ever tried to uh, pull a permit and get things done from the FERCOG inspectional services they would appreciate it and I don't think our costs are out of line with it. And, and and again I there's the budget for the building commissioner does not cover everything that the building commissioner does that he doesn't get he's our only the building commissioner is the only one that we don't that doesn't work for fees right um because it does point. so much more the zoning enforcement and everything else so it's a really good point actually i i think yeah. a, a a slight increase in some of the fees is, is just, and and we should actually look at it we should actually look at it every couple of years okay well, that said, we've got two schedules in front of us, and I'd be inclined to go right after his option one. Yep, I would agree. So I'll make a motion for second. option one. Is there a second? I second it, sir. Oh, sorry. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Three to zero. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate the legwork on this. And again, you're going to have fees for demolition, fences, pools, roofing, siding, et cetera, are going to go up. Uh, not dramatically, but incrementally. Last time we went up was three years ago. <coughs> we do have full-time inspection <coughs> services, so that's a good thing. Consider it a function of public safety. And please take out your permits, right? Yes. <laughs> One thing I did. It's want to cheap make clear money. Is, <laughs> it, yeah, it really this, is. This does not because these towns that I compared it to do not have the agricultural building, right. and we're going to still keep that in. Yeah. Right. It's the same. Yeah. Right. And, and if you could, Tom, actually, it's the first time that we've had since your appointment that you came in, um, especially in your zoning enforcement um, duties. But if you find inconsistencies and in, in the permit pricing or something else that we're doing, we would greatly appreciate you bring it forward to us. Okay, great. Okay? And, and again, we just, and, and again, unless you're on out, I mean, unless, unless you're a contractor doing the work, it'd be pretty difficult to know what's right and wrong. Right. or what's what's good or bad or or what could be changed so we'd appreciate if you hear something that you bring it bring it to our attention okay thank you very much thanks Tom. thank appreciate you it. occasional check on google maps oh swimming pool there hmm. there it happens exactly yeah. okay so aggregation next on our agenda so we had some notes from those nice people <coughs> and you wanted to talk about garbage you want to talk about burning garbage well, more I mean, biomass. I mean, biomass. <laughs> Good evening. So, um, yes, I'm here to give you an update on our explorations of municipal aggregation, our bulk purchase of electricity on behalf of the town's residents and businesses. And I'm here to talk principally about two things. Um, first of all, just a couple weeks ago, Denise Allard of the Colonial Power Group, um, you will remember there are aggregation consultants. Uh, approached the town administrator and the energy committee with a question and the question was as follows and I quote does the town of Sunderland have any feelings on the potential inclusion of wood derived biomass in mass class 1 wrecks the reason she uses the word potential is because right now the Baker administration and DOER has proposed revisions to what <coughs> is the renewable portfolio standard to relax the uh, restrictions on using biomass as a renewable energy source for generating electricity. So it hasn't been revised yet, but that potential is out there. So they're sort of uh, putting out a feeler to sure. the towns who are interested in aggregation to hear what they feel about that. And I wrote back <coughs> and said, well, the Energy Committee can't make a decision on the matter. We can only recommend to our appointing authority, the select board, and uh, they can make a decision because they were empowered by the town meeting to make decisions and enter into contractual relationships with Colonial Power. So um, at last Tuesday's uh, Energy Committee meeting, we did discuss the matter and we did pass a motion unanimously to reject uh, inclusion of biomass. Really? How come? I will tell you. Well, you know, you know it's a very important part of, uh, of the, the policies in Europe to use biomass. Yes. 
Why not in the United States? Okay, I will let you know. Um, there are three principal reasons why we find the use of biomass problematic. Uh, and I have a handout that explains the most important one. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. First of all, um, wood-derived biomass is not carbon neutral within a meaningful time frame needed to address climate change. Um, if you look at the chart in the middle of, of the handout I just gave you, the last two columns to the right, you'll see that um, wood, d despite what people might think, wood is actually more polluting and, and a higher greenhouse gas emitter than all, fo all other fossil fuels, including coal, oil, and natural gas. So the chart that's on the handout there gives the number of years it would take for wood biomass to be on par with either coal or electricity. And we actually, in this area, derive very little uh, coal-generated electricity, only about 4%, but we derive a substantial amount, the largest amount of our electricity from natural gas. And as you can see, for an electrical plant powered by uh, natural gas, if you look at the um, combined uh, uh, tree and, and um, residues, it's uh, quite a large number. And, and uh, if you look at just the, uh, I don't have the hand down in front of me, actually. <laughs> Yeah, so if you look at a uh, gas-powered electrical plant for tree and logging residues, it would take in excess of 90 years for it to achieve the, uh, the same greenhouse gas emissions as that electrical plant. The reason being, and this is sort of the, the problem with using the phrase carbon neutral, carbon neutrality doesn't happen instantaneously. It takes years for those trees to grow back. So when you burn the biomass to generate electricity, you emit carbon into the air, carbon dioxide and, and all sorts of other pollutants. Now, yes, trees can grow back and therefore cap recapture that carbon, carbon sequestration, but it takes a long time. And the problem is we don't have a long time. We don't have 90 years to wait for it. The most recent IPCC report issued last October says we only have about 10 and a half years to reduce our carbon emissions by half, and by 2050, we need to be carbon net zero in our emissions. Um, so at this point in time, we can't put more carbon into the atmosphere. We have to reduce carbon, and biomass does not reduce carbon within a time frame that's meaningful for combating climate change. The other reasons we are questioning biomass are the serious health concerns. It turns out that wood is more pollu polluting than even coal and certainly more polluting than natural gas in terms of its emissions. Um, the wood, burning wood uh, emits soot or particulate matter, nitrogen oxides which contribute to acid rain and uh, ozone at ground level, carbon monoxide, and when uh, trash is included in biomass incineration, we have even more toxic elements released, heavy metals, sulfur dioxide, and volatile organic compounds. This seriously affects people with respiratory conditions, with asthma, um, as well as people with cancer, and uh, heart attacks uh, increase in areas that have a lot of soot in, their, in the air quality. Massachusetts already has a problem with soot given the many households that use wood as a heating fuel in the winter. So to add more to that problem, I think, would be a step in the wrong direction. Lastly, um, the biomass and wood residues are called renewable. Even uh, an energy source that is renewable in theory may not be renewable in practice if its extraction rate exceeds its regeneration rate. I mean, technically, fossil fuels are um, 
product of natural processes over 100 million years. So in theory, the planet is generating more of them, but not at the rate that they're being extracted. So they're non-renewable for that sense. So any renewable resource can be made non-renewable by over-extraction. And that's another concern with regard to, to wood and biomass. We have to remember that even in the Northeast, we had serious deforestation. Uh, most of the trees you see around us are not more than 100 years old. Uh, so it is an issue. But the most important issue, I, sh I think, is this notion of carbon neutrality and adding more greenhouse gases at a time when we need to reduce them. So for that reason, um, Sandra, we would recommend to the board of uh, the select board that uh, we not accept um, class one renewables that include biomass as, as a component. There is a bill actually in the House uh, on Beacon Hill to try to um, prevent the uh, bigger administration from revising the renewable portfolio standards and to protect uh, both the, what's called the alternative portfolio standard, which, which uh, addresses heat generation, and the renewable portfolio standard, which addresses electricity generation. The bigger administration has been trying to relax the um, regulations on both of those, heat generation and electricity generation with regard to biomass. And um, there's great concern from not only health advocates, but also climate scientists and environmentalists um, trying to lobby against that. Okay. Appreciate the update. When do we need to make a decision by that? I guess they want to know soon, though there's the decision regarding municipal aggregation has to wait until the DPU yeah. issues its order. That's Got not it. likely to come until later in the summer. Okay. So there's no rush, but no. Uh, I think they want to hear back from get, town get so an they answer. have an idea when they go out to bid uh, what, what people are looking for. And that said, we should ask our aggregation consultant what percentage of mix, if there's even biomass potential in the mix? Right. Right. Let's right. If if this, if we're having if we're having the discussion about something that doesn't exist in Massachusetts yet, there's other avenues for affecting the decision about the biomass. The question is, if it can't exist in the mix, what's there to decide on? Is aggregation such? Is there enough of a critical mass in that aggregation that it could tip the decision toward including class two biomass? It's like, which, which is the front door and which is the back door? So a couple of pieces of other information that we've got to figure out, but I appreciate the information as well as the Energy Committee's effort on this. The other thing I'd like to talk about are the preliminary results from our survey yeah. that we issued a few weeks ago. Three um, people responded. No. Good. <coughs> Five. 125, I, I 125 people responded. So not bad. Far. And the survey is still open. So if you're listening at home and you have not yet taken the survey, it's still available through the town website under the news and announcements section. From there, you can get a link. And if you were a parent of a child at the Sutherland Elementary School, you will have received a direct link in um, the most recent newsletter that went home to parents on, on, over email. So yes, we received 113 online respondents and 12 respondents using the paper forms, which are available in this building, the town offices, and as well at the Sunderland Public Library. So, we have a drum roll, please. So you remember the first question that we asked was basically what people's preferences were for town-wide electricity purchase, cheapest, greenest, or some combination of cheaper and green. And as you might expect, um, 22% of respondents said they wanted the cheapest electricity available, 19% stated they wanted the greenest, and 59% said they wanted a combination of cheap and green. In other, in other words, as much renewable energy as possible, though still cheaper than ever source. Right. It's the Goldilocks option. Right, right, right exactly. Yeah. Interestingly enough, every, most people who filled out the paper form wanted the greenest energy. I don't know what to make of that. Uh, there's a little irony Love for you. That's hmm. good stuff. All right. <laughs> Figure that one out. That's interesting. I better yeah, not they're... use that paper for biomass. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they, uh, oh, anyway. uh, so I'm not going to try to interpret that. The second question was asking how important locally generated green electricity 
again, going, referring to the mass class when renewable energy was to them, um, suggesting that uh, more interest in mass, one, mass class one renewable energy may encourage more renewable energy development in the Commonwealth. And this is interesting. Um, it was split between the people who said it was very important and somewhat important. 41% said this is a very important issue to them, local, local generated. 41% said it was somewhat important hmm. to them. And 18% said it's not important at all. So, somewhere in between somewhat important and very important, sort of rather important, I guess you would say. You had 3% peel off of the cheapest camp. Hmm. And, 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 and that's okay. Yeah. But but you know what, Scott? The the reasons we we hesitated to to jump on board with the aggregation mm -hmm. was just because of the results that we're getting. Oh, I agree. 125 people respond. Great point, Tom. Out of 800 households, mm -hmm. it's it, it, and and I don't know out of the 100. I said 800 households. I'm not saying. <clears throat> How many commercial spaces? All that. This is just our one. So, right. Yeah. But how many? How many people from the same family right. voted in this one household? Yeah. So, you, and again here. We didn't do a direct mail-in. You know, we. Yeah, I know. Did it the cheapest way possible. Sure. Interesting. Huh. The last question was about price stability. Yep. Again, asking people how important price stability was and their ideas of municipal aggregation. 50% of respondents said it was very important. 40% said it was somewhat important. 10% said it's not at all important. I'm glad we had that question added. Thank you for including it. So those are the preliminary results. The survey, as I said, will still be up and running all through the summer. Cool. So we will try to encourage people who have not yet filled it out to do so. Getting the word out, right? Same with us. Nice. So that's, those are the results so far. Well, thanks for the update, Aaron, as, and as well as giving us something to think about with respect to uh, biomass. We've got a couple of meetings that are here every other week, so I would suspect that within a month we'll be able to have a, a more uh, uh, full discussion about that and get our recommendation to the uh, Colonial Power. Mm. Appreciate it. Great. Thanks so much. Have a great Thanks. day. You too. Hey, Peter, Peter wants to be on the planning on the capital planning committee. We have correspondence in from Peter Gagarin. Would like to let the select board know he's interested in joining capital planning, and we have an appointment list later. And if you're not on that, is there any reason we wouldn't consider Peter on capital planning? I don't hear any knows. Right. Great. Peter, we'll uh, include that in the. I want to deprive you of any more fun. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking here. Uh, there's, there's currently a vacancy on there, and Peter, we can put your name in. We'll just put that on the slate. Yeah, put it on the slate. Yeah. Right. Move to include Peter on the slate. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero. Okay, that was an easy one. Uh, board updates. Uh, we had our last um, Union 38 negotiation mm -hmm. meeting for teachers for a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, we have recommended going into mediation. Okay. So. Yeah, sometimes you get to that point where it's you have you have to bring in another set of eyes. Yes. No. It's a great way to put it. A number of things we've we've got agreement on, but there's yeah. a few things that there's some differences at the moment so we're just okay. working on that Tom? I'm not sure when we'll be picking up yet but um, well from the South County uh, Senior Center uh, Christine the director Christina the director has been there for a year mm -hmm. um, they just just they have uh, a nurse is available at the Deerfield Town Office Town Hall on Wednesdays from 10 to 2, no appointments need necessary. Um, Shine is a uh, is Shine is an organization serving health information needs of everyone. Counselors from LifePath are available for appointments in Greenfield. Um, 
and they have a telephone number 773-5555 or you can call the senior center to help with that free collection of drugs to safe, safely dispose of unwanted medi medications at the police stations in Sunderland and in Deerfield no questions are asked um, Amherst Survival Center has a free health clinic 134 8 Sunderland Road just off 116 is open to everyone on Monday 1230 to 130 p.m. and on Thursday from 5 to 6 um, and they also have a lot more programs there um, at the triad of Franklin County has many assistant assisted programs for seniors including 911 emergency cell phones medical equipment loans house ID numbers, smoke and carbon monoxide detectors, food and pet food needs, file of life information cards, well-being checks, and patrol stops by your home. Um, you can call 774-4726 or Sharon Pachurik at 665-3017. Um, Community Health Center offers medical and dental care to all ages regardless of insurance status or income and it's located in Orange, Greenfield and Turner's Falls. They have a telephone number for that. Um, Life Path offers assistance through the benefits counseling program for income eligible seniors <clears throat> ages 60 and up. Also they can help file applications for fuel assistance and find additional ways to save you money and they have a t now why I'm saying this is that these things these are things that are offered at the senior center on a daily basis um, and and I would say it in the keep trying to keep trying to reiterate that the senior center is more than playing cribbage you can do that um, you can play bingo also but there, there's a lot of things um, that that are going on you also have uh, meals every, you know, the days that 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 it's it that it's it's open. Um, a lot of people don't realize that if you or someone you know in Hampshire or Franklin County has a uh, consumer concern or problem, they can call contact the Northwestern District Attorney's Consumer Protection Unit. Um, seniors are very commonly exposed to um, this type of fraud, people trying to take advantage of them. Um, also, the Senior Center does have a wish list. If somebody's listening out there that has some of these items, they have, they're, they're looking for small water bottles, cheese, cake cups of decaf coffee, veggies, fruit, baked goods, snacks, salad, salad dressings, small plates, or if you have a laptop computer that you no longer need, the Senior Center um, is looking for, for that, that also. <coughs> um, also, the, the Deerfield, Sunday and Whiteley Police Departments would like everyone to remind everyone that if you need to get hold of them, the best way to get hold of them in an emergency is 911. If you do have a non-emergency situation, we do have belong to the Regional Dispatch Center. It has a telephone number of 413-625-8200. So you can get, you can get that also. Um, but again, there, there's a lot of things that, that are happening at, at the Senior Center. Um, and I would, and it's just not, like I said, what they consider the old senior center yeah it's a full-on series of programs and accessibility to other programs absolutely and 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 christina and the staff at the senior center um they're they're trained they're knowledgeable uh in getting you the information that you may need mm -hmm. and and sometimes people um, may feel lost don't know where to turn next the senior center is where to go. And if they can't help you, they will definitely find someone to help you.
Thank you, Scott. Network. Thank you, Tom. So sitting in the backs of Deerfield TA, before we get into a mass DOT discussion, which could take hours, <laughs> what do you want to talk about? Um, well, I just had the SCEMS lease. Uh -huh. I didn't know if that had made it onto your agenda, but I had um, offered to come and just be here if there was any questions and just... Um, come on up. It's easy. So, question from a BOO perspective. We have an SCEMS <coughs> building that's been built, right? Donated. We have a lease now. Has the BOO uh, taken action on what that lease is? And We voted the lease in January so to the support lease? the lease, yeah. Support the lease. All, all terms. Okay. So the BOO's got a recommendation going forward. And this right here is for the individual municipalities to participate in said lease? I think the way I understand it is that when the BOO agrees, each town has to sign, each yep. board signs yep. separately as um, an acknowledgement of that, I guess, through your IMA or whatever mm -hmm. your agreement was. It's because it's considered each a significant signs. decision. So, so one, mm -hmm. one reason why they're trying, yeah. one, one reason why they're trying to get the, the, get it done right now, and the, we had a meeting Thursday night while the members there that supported it was that it's in this year's our south county ems fy19 budget got it yep. so if we sign if we sign then the town of the airport would be able to um bill south county for the portion that they use this year sure that makes sense um and we, the money like i said the money's already in the budget if not then it would we'd have to go revert back to next we'd have to go to the next fiscal year mm -hmm and we couldn't carry over the funds. It's built in the assessment. The towns have already appropriated for SCEMS. This is not additional. Correct. So right. this is a matter of codifying the lease. And is it annual or multi-year? It's multi-year. Multi it's five-year. Okay. And has council looked at it? They have today. Um, Steve Marsters from KP Law oh. looked at it. There was a few changes that he's recommending. Mm -hmm. um, and have they incorporated the current? I did incorporate those changes. Okay. <coughs> Uh, so, with uh, any discussion with respect to it, I know it, it was in their, their new business. So. Well, the just so you know what the monies are that are collected as the lease are right. are going to be put into a fund yep. that will just be able to be used for the building. Okay. Right. So, one one of the concerns that the, the Board of Oversight had was that the, it, it wouldn't go in, just go into the general fund. We felt a, much, a lot better if the monies would be, go in so that you have perpetual care of the building. Mm -hmm. Not speaking from municipal side, not often do you have the opportunity to set something up so that there's a, a designated funding mechanism so, so while you may pay what thirty six thousand dollars a year for the the lease of the building, that money is going into into an account that the town can then use to maintain the building. If it needs a new roof, you get the you won't be coming back for a special town meeting to because the funds will already be the, the funds will already be held, um, or you needed a fix a driveway or an overhead door or, or whatever. The monies would already be there, so we felt that way. That made it a good, good deal all the way around. And it's a, and it's a, and it's a gift. It was a gift from the town, the the uh, Deerfield Academy. Yeah. But it's all, but it also perpetuates itself in that it's a gift that the communities have now a mechanism to pay for this building if it needs to be painted or. It's just a wonderful opportunity. I think the lease has the, um, you know, the, the regular sort of uh, routine maintenance. The inside um, is the responsibility of SCEMS, but as Tom pointed Structural. out, all of the capital or any structural outside building maintenance is responsibility of the town through this, um, these, these monies. I, I can't say with certainty what type of uh, set aside has been established at this point, so we sh I will definitely check with the accountant. The, the, certainly the, um, what you're saying is correct, that that is the idea that the, the town will own those future yeah. um, you know, building uh, uh, 
capital costs, but whether there's been a separate fund set up in the town. Yeah, I don't know how that has to go. Yeah. Ensure that that is the case. I know I worked in another community and we uh, tried to set up a special reserve fund with receipts from the um, right. from EMS, mm -hmm. and um, it it can be you know challenging. You have to do that in certain ways. <coughs> so just have to ensure. But certainly within the lease, the town is taking responsibility for those costs of the building. So said direct payment to whatever that bucket of money is set aside for the building isn't called out inside the lease. Correct. And not having had it inside the lease, what's our guarantee that it doesn't go to the general fund when you guys hit the skid some year? Right. That's a good question. Yeah, I'm not, and that's what I want to be honest about. I'm not sure what type of designated fund right. has been secured at this point, so I don't want to um, to mislead you yeah, yeah. into thinking that totally because good. that money very well could go into the general fund at right. this point. I don't think there has been a particular set aside. I want to double check yeah. with the accountant on that, but okay. I'm the relatively new representative for the fiscal sure. agent. So, sure. well, <laughs> thank congratulations. Yeah. I think. I, I, condolences. <laughs> 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 I, I yes. just know that that was the. Uh, it was certainly that the was intent. the intent right. of. Yes. Uh, Kip, Carolyn, and Trevor. Yeah. Yes, no, absolutely. Yeah. It definitely was the intent of the town of Deerfield. I yeah, just don't want to say things have occurred that have not. Right. Because certainly this lease process came about, um, just to, to my attention, fairly recently. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we're yeah. in the last weeks of June yeah. trying to right. you know, get it wrapped get up. Signed. So, um, so, yeah. Are we get to sign it first? Oh, tip of the spear again. It's always Sunderland. So, what's the motion? Is there a second? Uh, Second, just for discussion, do we need to have that accounted for in here at all? We can before would, we sign I, it, I or would, I would for what, David? Do we need to have that accounted to have a, a note made about some kind of some kind of mechanism, like the funding mechanism? Or? Or? Um, I, they're, they're the fiscal agents, and it's hard to build that. I mm -hmm. I've been assured by the board of selectmen at Deerfield that that's what they're going to do. So I would hold them to their word on that. And I believe that's what the finance committee has talked about as well. Okay. And if not, we can withdraw. There's a withdraw clause in it. As far as the scams yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. That's a good point that's to bring good. up in the discussion. Any more discussion? No. Nope. Okay. All those in favor of signing into the lease, try town lease with Waitley and Deerfield for the SEMS building? Aye. Aye. Okay. Is there a beach involved in this? No. <laughs> no, there's no beach involved. No beach. <laughs> no beach involved. Couldn't resist that one. I'll come again for the beach discussion. Okay. <laughs> It'll be a different night. Sure, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I appreciate that. Certainly yeah, is it in Deerfield's best interest to also maintain the building, so yeah. we'll iron that out and make sure it's all. Okay. Thanks for crossing over. Yes, thank you so much for attending to me before your long next agenda. <laughs> Start talking about moving road intersections. Although all these things you're talking about are very interesting. <laughs> very interesting. And I would like to, I'd love to come back at some point and talk to you about um, the the boo, the scam, the um, other shared, uh, the council on aging. We sure. are doing some stuff with the senior center Deerfield just in terms of our council on aging mm. and we'd love to just update you so you Great. you know so we stay sort of in alignment on those things so well, nice. shared services thank Great. you thanks so much thank you yeah okay all right yeah because this is now my i'll try to keep that signature page as my one original page okay. but if you want to make a copy of it just okay and send it over yeah and then just scan it and send it to me i guess okay that's fine uh -huh. thanks so much thank you so much thanks. i appreciate it okay town administrator updates um, I have under updates the Mass DOT um, capital improvements plan for uh, 2019 through 2024. They had an open comment period for the public. And as you are aware, we received many comments okay. from residents in town who are interested in um, the Rotary, which has a, a, a number but no funds attached to it at this point. Um, so that circulated around to um, Representative Natalie Blay and to the FERCOG and to uh, Senator uh, Comerford as well. And uh, they all wrote letters in support of uh, funding uh, for, the for the Rotary or Roundabout, I want to say. Um, 
envelopes. So you have a copy of the letter that the FERCOG sent in support of the uh, funding for the roundabout. So uh, I guess at this point we're in a holding pattern waiting to see. So um, we, we usually with those, um, that public comment for the CIP, mm -hmm. those are um, programs and projects that already are assigned numbers and funding, like the North Main Street Reconstruction Project oh, yeah. is on there. Um, so uh, the Senator Comerford and uh, Representative Blay are just asking them to, and the FERPOC to consider speeding up the process right. and allocating funding if, if available for that project. So it exists in the queue and we're looking to move it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no year or no funding was yeah. assigned to no it. No basic design or anything like that. It's just like that intersection. I think they did a feasibility, you know, okay. it, just very preliminary. Right. But you're on the list in the beginning of the process. Right. Yeah. Tom? I, I would just caution everyone. I mean, it's great that we have, you know, I, I read the letter where we need leadership and we need, I would, I would ask people to slow down. Um, the intersection was just redone um, a decade ago. Um, maybe 15 years ago, and that was the that had the quote unquote all the town input, and 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 it was a solution to the problems. I will say I, I'm familiar with roundabouts and how how they have worked in different locations, but I would I would I would say that it's not universally thought that a, a roundabout will solve the problems here. Okay. Um, and and I would I would just caution people. It, it's it, and it's in, it, and it's interesting because what what I had heard to date was that they're talk that they were talking about a, a, a roundabout, and that the there's there's different versions of roundabouts. There's single roundabout, double roundabouts. There's you know two lane roundabout, single lane roundabout, and the the, the design on the board right now. And that they have for Sunderland, probably because of the land that that's available, is a single, and it may just at may may just be at the top end of the capacity that would not a, a, allow for growth down the road. Mm. So before everybody gets too excited about a roundabout, they really think you got to look at all the options that are out there. Mm. So I I would say if somebody wants to write a letter, their letter should be. Un unless they're a traffic engineer that has done the study there, that they that they ask for a study to be done on what the best solution is to the concerns here, and 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 we may we may think about asking the COG to help us with that. Um, they they've may offered, be able to do that. They've offered to host a meeting. You know, if we wanted to do it. I and again, just for me, I, I'm not a traffic. I'm not a civil guy. I, I've talked to Sybils all the time, um, and I and I know what they tell me, and and I know what I heard about the intersection out here. Um, and if if we're supporting a, a roundabout just because it's a, the newest and greatest, maybe we we need to understand exactly what what's being planned. Well, I, I, it may it may not be the long, it may not be a long term solution, solution to us. Sure. us. Tom, if I could, one of the. It obviously ended up on their list for 2020 to 2024 for a reason. So maybe understanding what the reasons are, mm. right, I, would, I, would, would be helpful first. That should be the basis for whatever community input there is. Right. What got right? us to this what point? What got us to place? this point? We we haven't had we ha as far as I know we haven't had a community we have not had a community public hearings where Correct. where the state has actually came, come to us and right. asked us. And, and again, I, I believe, I, I mean, I've been down here enough. I see the problems that we have there. Sure. I've been caught in the traffic. I've been caught trying to cross the street as a pedestrian. I know there's a problem. I don't know. I, I know where I'm familiar with roundabouts that have been that put in. They've been very successful mm -hmm. um, cutting down traffic time, pedestrian accidents, all of that. That being said, we need to fully explore the, the amount of traffic that that looked that that's going to go through this intersection mm -hmm. you know five years ten years fifteen years and if we're at the high end of the design capacity right now right maybe maybe yeah, yeah, best. but but then it, then if you have to then if you have to make a bigger roundabout maybe it's no longer 
well, you fit into the character of the town. Right. And also, Great when you point. get into two lane Great roundabouts, point. I work near one, and yeah. it's actually one of the most dangerous areas uh, in the state uh, because yeah, I, there's an accident every. And I don't know, week. you know, do you, you look at the roundup or the, <clears throat> the, the rotary up in Greenfield. Okay, yeah. And, and, I, and I don't know if this is true. This is what someone was just telling me the other day is that Connecticut, the person in the in the uh, coming into the rotary has the uh, right of way. Yes. Massachusetts does vary in its rights in that respect. And, yeah. and, and so the. And again, this is again what I'm I'm told, and 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 that's why they have so many accidents at the rotary in in, in Greenfield, is because of are, they're thinking, oh, it's this way, and it's right. All yeah. The, so and again, yeah. I I would just like to, yeah. and I, I would I would before, and again before we we go too far, I would I would ask the state that we start having public hearing, so that because people other people may have different opinions. Sure. Oh yeah, there's definitely differing opinions out there. Know that. And, yeah. and, and, and again, we, we, we've addressed we have addressed issues that people have different opinion and we and as long as we have a conversation so everybody can get their their opinions out there and and even even on our board we may you may come with one one opinion but after you have a, a, a discussion sometimes lengthy, um, you may change change your your opinion. Well and once you jump from a one to a two lane roundabout slash rotary it does change things dramatically. But you have to look at yeah. it. And I don't, I, again, I'm not a simple. The, the guys that work with, you know, that, they're, they're a special breed. I, I, I don't know. I, you know, I, I, okay. I yep. So we'll, we'll get in contact with a letter from the board to the DOT about some public hearings. I, I'd want to reach, before I, I wrote too much about wanting a ro rotary or roundabout, I would suggest that we ask Mass Highway that they could come together and we could have a public hearing so that we can have a Makes discussion. Sense. I think the, the first order of business would be, why is it on the list? We didn't ask for it to be on the list. Somehow it made it to their list. Mm. Go ahead. May I? Yeah, please. Okay, so in um, 2014, there were so many uh, accidents here. There was such a high accident incident that it triggered an automatic uh, road Review. safety audit. Yep. Um, and so one of the recommendations in the road safety audit is that a roundabout be uh, considered. Um, and then we held a meeting um, in this room. Um, there were a lot of people in attendance, the engineers of the North Main Project and a bunch of people from DOT and FERCOC were here and, um, you know, talking about uh, Planning board meeting. moving no, it was just, just a open. meeting. Okay. Yeah, um, um, there were about four, fourteen or eighteen people here. We had the table set up in a triangle, um, and um, to talk about you know moving moving this along. At that <coughs> point, they did a feasibility <coughs> study. They FERCOG did a traffic count. Yep. Yeah. Um, and they. Um, and then DOT did a feasibility study and determined that uh, a roundabout would be, it would fit a single lane. A double lane is never under consideration. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't even talk about that. I don't think yeah, we, there's have, enough we don't space have for the it. space. Right. So, um, but the, um, indeed the traffic count was toward the, I think the max is like 25,000 a day and we were at about 22 at the peak um, you know, um, so that's where that's where that was at. But what you know, they did an analysis and just and then and that's when they put it on their list. Okay. So that's the history of how how it got on their list. However, <laughs> after that happened, it's just been sitting, uh, you know, languishing. Nothing's been done. Meanwhile, people are getting hurt out here, <laughs> um, and you know, uh, I personally am like really tired of just w watching it languish and that like a pretty significant safety issue just kind of just not being addressed um my next door neighbor has been living here six years and has been hit twice hmm. in that intersection and now she's maybe permanently injured i think she sent one of the letters so, yeah, so uh, uh you know at Two of my neighbors, just on my block, like within a couple hundred feet of me, have been injured. 
So I, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't want us to have to wait for a fatality. I sure. mean, that's what it took to have something right. happen down there. And it, I just, I just don't think it's right. I mean, the intersection, it's not just like our local issue, like North Main, it's a regional, it's a, it's a intersection that, you know, everybody who crosses the only bridge between Northampton sure. and Greenfield goes through that intersection. The, all of the traffic between UMass and I-91 goes through that intersection. It's, it's, it's like a, a regional uh, junction. And so I, I, you know, I'm happy to like find the best option, but we gotta, I, I, I think it's important to get movement and action on this and, and not, you know, just sort of sit here and watch the state do nothing. Fair. So we'll start with another, an additional letter in the portfolio and see if we can get our legislative team to the extent they can help. One might wonder too, in the short term, maybe we, uh, you know, maybe we mention that to the police chief too, because part of it is clearly people not following the rules too. You know, because that that's obviously a big contributor sure. to the problem. Yeah, one of the things that was on the list of recommendations that never happened was, you know, to put in one of those signs like they put in, you know, further down on one sixteen that you know, shows the traffic limit and your speed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. Well, we are talking about putting one of those on the north side, too. I know that. Like the, the actual speed number sign, yep. Yeah, um, I think it helps a lot. Sure. Mm -hmm. we, we, as a town, can't do anything on 116. They have to do everything, so, you know. Part of the nudging. But we have to, yeah. I mean, we just have to keep on them. I don't want. I just. I don't want to see someone get wiped out. I'm no. tired of seeing people get hurt. Okay. Well, let's get a correspondence out there and invite them in. Thank you. I. I. Thank again. You. I'm. I don't question the need for a chain, but I. I'm not advocating for one method over the other. Oh, I understand. I. I. And so, unless somebody has a. Uh, P. E. After their name, it's awful tough. It's not hard to advocate for change, sure. but but the, the the letter specifically says a roundabout. I don't know that a roundabout is the right answer there. Well, it's important we can pester them and bring them in and get an update. See just what the right. hell they're well, doing. It's, it's, it's on their list. It's on, it's in the it's it's on there. They've done they've started on it. Yep. So you know, we, so let's bring them in and see what's going on. Keep the conversation. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we've got appointments, like a hundred plus appointments. <clears throat> we did add tonight Peter Gagarin to capital planning. Uh, we have an existing appointment currently that we need to discharge. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to uh, make appointments as presented on our handout. Second. Okay. Are there any that are open? These are by year, right? Looks like we're substantially. There was one open on capital planning, which Peter just volunteered for. And thank you, Peter. There is a CPC under rec that's open. CPC Recreation Committee is an open position. There is Council on Aging vacancy. So again, I'm reading these off to so people who may or be interested. Please contact the office. We'll post them. Yeah. Yeah. There is a Franklin County Solid Waste Rep that is an open seat, not an open appointment. There's a hazardous waste coordinator that's an open position. Again, these are appointments. And if you're passionate about these issues, please contact us. There's a member of the rec committee that's an open position, if you're interested in that. Uh, 
Veterans Graves actually is done through the uh, Veterans Memorial to Dan. Dan, the yeah. 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 Oversight Committee has an opening as well. So we will have this available. If you're interested in any of those positions, please contact the office and contact the board. We can get you appointed. And we sure this is a big list that's all inclusive. Mm -hmm. can we have a short list that just has the open positions. Sure. Yeah. Right. You kind of get lost in, in the mix. That lets us also uh, remind people. Makes me think too. Maybe at some point we need to look at like moving like parks and rec together and yeah. creating like the yeah. parks and rec thing. Yeah. It makes good sense. Next year. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. All right. Three to zero, please. Again, we have one other piece of business <clears throat> tonight, and that is to, and what's the act discharge an appointment? Rescind. Rescind. That's the word. Uh, we need to rescind an appointment at the police department. Uh, that is for the firearms trainer uh, for the remainder of the year. There's not much year left, but that's something that was committed to. So is there a motion to rescind that appointment? Uh, motion. Second. Motion is made and second to rescind the appointment. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Three to zero. Okay. The correspondence that's here, I guess this is just kudos to Community Pathways, right? She's not stepping down. Thank you for allowing yeah, my she opinion. is stepping down. Yeah. She doesn't want to be reappointed, so I did remove her from the list. <clears throat> so that's just background. Yeah. And thank you, uh, Melissa Pirro, for your help on Community Pathways, and uh, enjoy, enjoy getting out there. Yes. Okay, anything else for tonight? What's that, Mr. Our next, our next meeting is in a couple of weeks. We're not going to tell you the date of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> Before F cat's like, what? Wait a minute. <laughs> All right. It's summertime. Everybody be safe, be smart. And uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Uh, motion. Second. Motion is being <clears throat> seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero, please.